Christmas Island is in the middle of nowhere. Red bass, that is what we are going to hopefully encounter. You ready to do this? Hell yeah, I wanna do it. <laughs> yeah, I know you do, man. All the fingers are crossed. As they say that there's a bunch of red bass out here. <gasps> we fly. He took it, man, he took it. The ocean is a very big place. Where they were one day, they might not show up again for another month. I mean, we wanted to get that fish marked off of our list. Yeah! <laughs> if there's a reason for me to live, this is the moment. Four wheel drive, mud, chainsaw, shotguns, fishing. Oh, that's expedition. If Chris Owens gets lost, it's kind of a weird scenario. When I have my life in his hand, I'm scared. Out fishing with the drug cartel. Bad. A guy that can really cut loose sometimes. But also really worry about what's going down. I'm a little apprehensive. I'm a little nervous. I don't care what we do as long as I make it back in one piece. Brian, he's a researching machine, okay? He's got all the latest GPS, satellite, map technology. Yeah, that guy is jerrying so much stuff. We're not gonna pretend to be pro bass fishermen. We actually really don't know what we're doing half the time, but we're doing it anyway. That's what we're here to do. We're here to explore and to try to find these bass. That's what I'm talking about. I don't think we've been any place as far away from civilization is Christmas Island. You look at this on the map, it's hard to even find it. We struck out for red bass in Papua New Guinea, so that's why we came to Christmas Island. This is where it's gotta go down. Before we came here, we did a lot of research. Try Google searching red bass and see what comes up. The only thing that comes up is a bunch of images of red bass guitars. You can't find anything on the internet. There's nothing on this species of fish even being here. We have no idea what we're gonna do to get the bass, how they swim, what do they eat, where do they live. Usually we're fishing in fresh water. It might be a lagoon or a river system, but when you actually fish in the ocean, I mean, everywhere you look, the habitat is always changing. This is gonna be an interesting challenge. We're gonna mix things up a little bit this time. Costa and Geobass team set out to find a fifth wheel to go with us out on one of our adventures. Uh, my name is Jared Zissou. There was a contest set up within the fishing clubs of the universities. I am a natural resources major. I'm coming to you from my dorm room. And they had to submit a video as to why they should be chosen to go on this next adventure with us. Fly fishing is my life. On the side, I also run a company called Fly Lords. We finally got the dude, I think, and I really think he's the dude. Yeah, let's give this kid a call and totally change his life today. We're just telling uh, Jared that he's gonna win. Hey. Hello? Yo. Is this Jared? Yeah. So, how you doing, man? Uh, not bad. You're one of the finalists. Sweet. I, we just gotta ask you a few questions. Yeah, yeah. So, do you have a passport? Um, yeah, I have a passport. You do? Yes. Three pages in your passport's not full or anything, right? No, it's open. Well, yeah, it's, it's good that you got your passport because uh, <laughs> we want to invite you to come with us into Christmas Island to go explore the coast. Shut up. You're the winner, dude. You're the one we picked. Come to Christmas Island with us. You want to come to Christmas Island? <laughs> go to Christmas Island! Jared's probably thinking that he's won some sort of dream trip. This is where Santa Claus vacated. But we got some news for him. She just enlisted in Geobass boot camp. Are you stoked or what? Yeah, blood's pumping, heart's racing. <laughs> we landed on Christmas Island. It is hot, but there was just miles of flats out there. Did you see that, Brian? I saw it. It was an ocean of fish craziness. We got hooked up with the Akari House through a friend of ours named Tim Pass. The Akari House is going to get us the permits so that we could go camping on this island. And an opportunity to camp on Christmas Island is something we can't pass up. Home for the next two weeks, baby. We're camping in the middle of nowhere, and it's sand, and it's hot. And if you're in college, and you're from Jersey, if you haven't been in those situations, it, it makes it pretty tough. You might just uh, turn into a man on this trip, you know? Turn this boy into a man. Yeah, let's do it. Into a fisher man. <laughs> We're, uh... Heading out to uh, boat right now. This is salt water fly fishing 101. 
This is our first time fishing for bass in salt water. This is an exciting time for us. First day on the open water. So frustrating. The wind. I don't know where it's coming from, but it's got five or six foot swells out there. And we gotta find cover. Right now, you can't fish out of a pongo. The waves are like four or five feet tall. It's a lot different fishing salt water than fresh water because there's so much freaking water. I mean, it's literally just been way more difficult than I think any of us had any idea. I mean, we cannot find where these red bass are. The weather is just beating us down. We gotta pull into shore. So uh, I think the plan now is to go into the bat country. And, um, you know, we'll see what we get into. When we got into the bat country, the wind was down. Here we are, pretty much uh, traveled to another planet and just landed in bonefish heaven. Just miles and miles of flats in every single direction. Do a little bone fishing in between uh, being able to hopefully get out to the, uh, to the bass. This is a chance for Jared to really get some stuff figured out about flats fishing. I get the bonefish's attention, it's following my fly all the way in, eats my fly, and then I set the rod tip up into the air. What's gonna happen is you're gonna create a shock absorber. You're not gonna be able to penetrate the fish's mouth. Basically pull the fly out of the fish's mouth. So you just wanna keep stripping until you feel the fish and then lift the rod. Oh no! Oh. We've just run into, I don't know, a couple hundred, a couple hundred bonefish sitting right in front of us. One of the better days I think I've had in a long time, man. Yeah! Dude, that is ridiculous. I freaking slammed it. Thank you, Mr. Bonefish. Yeah! Woo! Ooh, ooh, ooh. So yeah, hooked this guy and took me to my backing in about uh, 15 seconds. Got him back in. And then... You think you're getting this uh, this fishing thing figured out on the flats? Yeah, this is Bonefish 101 class. It's a Bonefish Bonanza out here, really. This is Jared's first time out. He's learning though, but he had some stomach problems. Dude, I tried pooping it a little bit and it was just like gray. It's gray? I've never seen gray shit. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that we do during the day is a new experience for Jared. Like, you don't kiss poisonous fish. I wouldn't fish know they're toxic. <laughs> <laughs> Learn about back casting. Yeah, I took a couple hooks to the back. <laughs> Let me help you out. You got it? <laughs> All right, there you go. There, watch your cheek. Uh, what else? No dirty shoes in the boat. You gotta wash your feet before you get in the boat. Come on, man. He's getting it together. I actually have been pretty impressed. Uh, another strikeout session today. Searching for red bass, not finding red bass. Very, very frustrating. Go out there and try it again, you know. Another day. We're catching some fish, but the fish that we came after, this red bass, um, they're in some water, you know. They're, they're in the, the rocky coral stuff. And some of these spots are like fishing in an aquarium. You know, you got all these species of fish, and sometimes it's hard just to get past all the fish just to get down to where you think the red bass might be. You know, we're finding plenty of fish. We're finding plenty of GTs, bonefish, all kinds of fish but not the fish we're here for, and that's red bass. We're on our way out to the deeper water to try to catch these red bass. We're out fishing for red bass, and we came across this huge milkfish school. We figured, why not give it a go? And sure enough, there's thousands of them out here in a school. There's a herd of them, a couple hundred of them right out here. We're gonna learn how to milk them. Haven't milked a fish yet, but... <laughs> I don't know anything about milkfish aside from they are an incredible fight on a fly rod. They have this crazy sickled tail that uh, makes them go really fast and hard. <laughs> oh, it's up top, dude. It's up top, it's huge. Please don't come off the line. <laughs> you just barely even pick it up, the slightest little tension. It's in their mouth and you gotta set the hook, but can't feel the bite at all. It's about time! Uh, yeah. <laughs> these fish do not want to give up. Oh man, I've been wanting to catch one of these fish for a while. Yeah! 
<laughs> yeah! Thank you, fish. That was fun. Milking fish is not easy. <laughs> the whole time, I've been thinking about this milk fish and how cool it would be to get one, and I've been sick. You might not feel great when you wake up, and you might have to crap all over the place, and your stomach might not feel great. I gotta talk a little bit of shit, because uh, I was sick for the first two days, and Jay had the camera in my face the whole time, and I was like, dude, I feel like shit, and he's like, yo, it's part of the show, come on. Update from Jay Johnson. Oh, man. I got some sort of um, bad booty. It's gonna prevent me from doing what I really wanted to do, and that's catch a milkfish. So this one's for Jay, who's in bed, and he's got diarrhea. Here's a milkfish for you. <laughs> in the morning, we headed out to a different part of the island, you know, a, a new coastline, trying to devise a plan for the day. We're gonna have to cover all kinds of different water if we stand a chance at catching these red bass. The tide's going out. And really what we want is kind of be here in the beginning of the incoming where the fish will feel it and will start to move up with the current and tide. So we heard this, this is possibly a good place to set up and wait for red bass. You need higher water. Right now the tide's coming in. Not quite high enough yet because we haven't been seeing any fish coming in toward the shoreline. We're just sitting here waiting because we know once the tide gets in, there's going to be GTs patrolling the shoreline. Dude, they're seeing GTs out there right now. They were huge. There was two of them. Where? You're right there! Dude, those things are huge! Those I know, I saw them! Those are not 30 pounders. We've had some monsters come in. Absolute monsters come in. I'm a little concerned that I might be undergunned here with this rock. It's like catching a freaking torpedo yeah. on full blast. Wow. <laughs> I can still see him out there. I can still see him. He's right there. He wanted to party. Yeah, one, that's a big one. Just doesn't know with who. That's even a GT, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, baby, little guy. And now he's off to some other party, probably party with dorks. Oh! Yeah, they got spikes, I know. Yeah! He's throttling me. Oh! Yeah! So we're out here. Like on the southern end of Christmas Island. And we're just bombing on this reef. There's GTs cruising all over the place. All sorts of fish. Yeah. I mean, we were catching bonefish earlier. Hell yeah! Woo! Ah. There's so many of them. Woohoo! GT. Oh. Probably Ooh. the hardest fighting fish. Yeah! Oh, they rival the Papua New Guinea black bass right here for power. The main camera battery dies. Why doesn't that surprise me? That was my fault. Um, I gotta check the batteries next time. That was my bad. When you blow it, you have the rest of the night to think about it. Dude, it is not easy out here. It seems like every day there's something new that he has to learn. Yes, learning every day. He at least listens to what we're saying. Those fish are really intimidating. I had a little accident my finger got wrapped. And he's a total greenhorn. I will name him Jerry. Every day he figures more stuff out. And yeah! He's learning, he's listening. If he's representing the college age demographic, yeah, I think the country's gonna be all right. Yeah, I kinda, kinda feel bad about making fun of Jared. We, uh, we have seemed to have lost our Chris. Wildman Owens isn't feeling too well. You notice that Chris is always, always the first person to talk trash when someone's sick. He got done telling us that he hadn't been sick for three years. He just got struck down because um, he is uh, tits up right now. Well, maybe tits down, I don't know. We usually assume uh, in this kind of situation it's diarrhea, explosive diarrhea. This time it wasn't, it was exploding out of his mouth. We're all pretty worried about him. Boat showed up this morning and uh, he wasn't on it. I mean, it's not like Chris would just get up and bail like that, so he's definitely not feeling very good. We're wondering about our friend Chris. Is he dead? Chris is in the hospital now. I'm actually worried that uh, something terrible happened to him last night. We haven't seen him in about 16, 17 hours. This might be the time that we have to actually use Global Rescue, because uh, it could be really serious. 
But we don't know, because we haven't talked to him. After the first day, it wasn't as funny. And after the second day, someone had to take it serious. And then the third day now is, uh, we're running man down. And uh, how long do you want to run man down in paradise, you know? Look who has arisen. Oh my God, I still thought you were in the hospital today. How was the IV? Mm, five of them. Five? five bags? Yeah, five. Wow. Oh, dude, going twice. It doesn't Sorry. explain why he's walking like he's uh, got a bad leg. I it's not quite gangsta limp, it's uh, more kind of gimp limp. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what to do next. I mean, we're, we're just hitting rock bottom here. We gotta figure out some way to find these bass. I figure we're gonna be buried waist deep in red bass blood. We've been saying that for about six days. I heard on the seventh, God said, thou shalt rock, red bass. This is the fly that I got Brian really drunk. <laughs> Talked him into letting me borrow it oh, today. Oh yeah, look, little one. They cannot resist it. There's no lights. Oh, Shut up. Right now. That's the one, not what Chris is throwing. That's a fish, there's a big, whatever it is. Oh. Red bass, look how big his eyes are. That's for seeing into the future. And the future's not looking too bright for these guys. Ooh. That might be a nice one. As soon as it hit the water, slam. First cast. This day's starting out pretty good. What are we gonna do if we get a 20 pounder? Let's find out. You know, I'm just hoping that Jared's having as good as luck as we are today. So hopefully, Jared, stick it to him, dude. Put the wood on him, do it. I got faith in you, brother. Well, a decent size one. That's what we're after, buddy. Red bass. This thing was bucking. Holy Red bass instruction, insane. Hot fishing ever since we got here this morning. Absolutely, oh, some of the best fishing we've ever done, fishing for bass. Back in the drink. Whoa, something serious, man. Yeah. This is what we've been looking for. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dang, they fight like crazy, man. They fight crazy, crazy. That is massive. <laughs> Red bass. Red bass, it's man. So I just wanted to give a shout out to Costa for having the college dude out here with some crazy guys. That was badass. Thank you. <laughs> he looks like a native. If I didn't know better, I think Jer's lineage came from Christmas Island. Ah, oh, Rocky! <laughs> when Costa asks you to go on a, a crazy adventure with, with five random dudes. You don't say no to that. 